Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Zahn. I'm one of the co-founders of Anisha. Today I'm going to yap to you a little bit about what Anisha is and why it's the multi-chain Garden of Eden. Um, this presentation was a little rushed, but it'll have a good amount of character. So before we dive into what Anisha is, I just want to give a little background on how kind of uh, roll-ups came to play and how the multi-chain evolved over the past few years. So we started off with Ethereum. Then we had this idea of Cosmos. It was the first iteration of basically app chains. Cosmos grew into its own ecosystem of lots and lots of app chains. You had things like um, Osmosis, Stride, Neutron, Terra, uh, Mars, everything in between. And there's this native system of interoperability with IBC. Um, Ethereum scaled in a different way. They followed the roll-up model. That was essentially bundling a bunch of transactions together, compressing them, and then storing it on Ethereum. So you had things like the OP stack and Optimism. You had Arbitrum, some stuff like Metis, ZK Sync, Starknet, of course. Um, and then you had some people try different ideas for how to reach scale. So things like Say, Aptos, Solana, uh, but Let's ignore those for now. What this kind of did over time is we fragmented this world of blockchains. You basically had three different types of ecosystems now. The ones like Solana and Aptos, which were on their own, Cosmos, which was all connected to each other by default, and then the rollups on Ethereum. Um, and then over time, we came up with this concept of modularism. We said, OK, we're going to rebrand this fragmentation and just slap on the word modular and say that that is different parts of the stack where you evolve each little piece, whether that be the data availability layer, the execution layer, the settlement layer, all those different pieces. But what happened with modular is we resulted in this. This is not the optimal situation. Right now, when you build blockchains in the modular stack, you basically have every single option possible for each layer. And like a Subway sandwich, sometimes you don't need all of this choice. So you have so many different types of VMs, from Cosmosm to Move to EVM. You have all these interoperability solutions from layer zero to hyperlane to IBC to across. You have different settlement layers from Ethereum to Initia to now Solana. Uh, and then you have all of these data availability layers. But the thing is, a lot of these are very much the same. We don't actually need all these different choices. The biggest reason people choose between a different DA layer or a different interoperability solution is because they have not done an airdrop yet. And that doesn't seem like the core reason we should be picking new pieces of technology within the modular stack. And then also, modularity creates liquidity fragmentation. If you've ever been to Solana and tried to bring over USDC, you'll notice that there's literally hundreds of different types of USDC. This is the worst friction for new users trying to come into our space. And so what do we do? Essentially, we realized that the multi-chain experience is kind of garbage right now. There's too many choices. <clears throat> There's too much fragmentation. It's really just not optimal. But app chains are the future. And the reason app chains are the future is because over time, people will want to control all of the value they create. You see this with things like DYDX becoming a, an app chain. You see Hyperliquid is an app chain. Things like Osmosis or um, Avo, they all transition eventually to app chains because the execution layer is where you can retain all of the value you create rather than giving it over to the layer one you currently exist on. But the problem to this date has been it's been too complex or it's not interoperable enough for these app chains to actually thrive. So those two stacks that I mentioned were Cosmos and rollups on Ethereum. The biggest problem with Cosmos was that even though it is the most flexible stack, you have things like Bearchain, Celestia, DYDX, um, 
all built on top of the Cosmos SDK and has this native underlying system of interoperability with IBC, it is a pain in the ass to build with. You have to run a layer one every single time. That means you have to deal with creating a validator set, you have to create the decentralized validator set, you have to inflate your token supply to pay for security, um, and that is not really an easy way to launch an app chain. Then the problem with Ethereum and the rollups that exist there is you get the exact same copy-paste fork every single time you build on the OP stack or Arbitrum Orbit. They're all literally exactly the same except for the smart contracts that you build on top of each of them. So it's not really the most flexible design. And so we decided at Inisha there are good bits of both of these pieces, the flexibility of Cosmos and the ease of launching rollups. So let's just rebuild the whole thing, but have a very opinionated design on how multi-chain networks should actually exist. And so this is going to be the world once Initia goes live on mainnet. Beautiful and lovely. So what is Initia? It is essentially a network for interwoven rollups. And one of the ways that we create this new Garden of Eden of multi-chain is we make sure that we are very aligned amongst all the users. And in an aligned ecosystem, everyone's moving in somewhat the same direction. And so you can create alignment across three main verticals, and that's where we have iterated on most. The infrastructure stack, the product stack, and then the economic systems that bind everything together. So within the infrastructure stack, what we did first was we built Minishas. Minishas are full-fledged optimistic rollups that are Cosmos SDK chains. So you have the flexibility of the Cosmos SDK. You can change literally everything about how the rollup actually operates, and that is not something you can do on the OP stack or Arbitrum Orbit. We put three different VMs on this. So you can use Solidity code, Move code, or Cosmosm code, whatever fits you and your application best. We created a sequencer set called Minimint that is just by nature a decentralized sequencer that comes on all of these rollups. And then we just enshrined Celestia for data availability and just enshrined layer zero for all things messaging. We're not gonna give the choices of this DA layer or that, this interoperability solution or that. We basically just pick the best partners and work with them so that as soon as you launch a Minisha, you are ready to go. And what I mean by that is right when you launch an app chain on Inisha and any of the VMs, you have access to Oracle's Layer Zero, IBC, Fiat on-ramps, every single wallet, whether that be EVM wallets, Cosmos wallets, in-app wallets, you have native USDC and CCTP, and basically, that's everything you need. As an app chain developer, you don't have to BD yourself into talking to all of these third-party service providers. Instead, we just built it all and enshrined it into the app chain system we have at Anisha. A few other things we did on the infrastructure side is we created Omnisha-wide fungibility. What that means is the USDC on one rollup is the same as the USDC on another. That means you don't have to have liquidity bridges, you don't have USDC.E and USDC.something else, you just have the same USDC across every layer two on Anisha. Then we built a system called enshrined liquidity. Essentially what we did here is we took a DEX, we put it onto our layer one, and then we allow users to stake in it XLP tokens directly with validators. What this does is instead of just using the init token for security of the L1, we've actually used productive security because you're staking liquidity with validators. This helps secure the network and all the layer twos that exist on top, but it also builds a massive hub of liquidity that is very accessible to every layer two on top of Anisha by default. And the last thing it does is it acts as a router between all the layer twos. So you can move USDC from one rollup to ETH on another, all in one seamless flow. Coming back to the three pillars of alignment, 
After we have infrastructure alignment where every rollup is using the same stack, we built product alignment. So that means what do end users uh, do? What do they interact with? How do they connect to wallets on every one of these app chains? How do they bridge around every one of these app chains? Making sure that the UX is the same across the board so that it is a very easy experience for new developers and users. And then the last piece of the puzzle we built is economic alignment. How can you create a dominated convergence such that every ecosystem participant across users on the layer one, users on layer twos, app chain builders themselves, um, all have an underlying asset that they care about? One of the main reasons we built this is because if you look at the multi-chain world right now of Cosmos, you basically have Atom as the hub. No one cares about Atom. It is a down-only token that unfortunately has no use cases. No one has interest in building liquidity for Atom on their chain. No one wants to use Atom as security. And basically, this has resulted in, in Cosmos somewhat having a drawdown. But if you look at Ethereum in the multi-chain world that exists there, everyone really cares about the ETH token. You'll see that every rollup uses ETH for gas. The DEXs on every rollup all have ETH as the largest pair. And every lending market has ETH as the largest lending asset. And so it has enshrined itself as the money of the Ethereum multi-chain world, while Cosmos has not done that. So at Initia, we thought, how do we build a similar situation where we give layer two teams and app chain developers a reason to integrate the init token to help them attract more users and retain them, but also essentially build the demand side of the Initia token across this world and build new use cases. Many people focus on the supply side of token, trying to reduce the supply through things like burns. But frankly, gas fees uh, all will slowly drive to zero as we have different types of DA layers. And so burning and reducing supply is not actually an effective means for creating token um, significance. And so rather, you build the demand side. And so we built a system called Initia VIP for that. I unfortunately don't have enough time to dive into it today. But um, if you go to Initia.xyz or you follow Initia on Twitter, there is a very nice blog that I wrote about it. Um, thank you very much. If you want to chat to me about Initia later, feel free to find me around here. Or if you want to learn about teams building on the interwoven stack, um, let me know. If you're an app chain developer that's building in Move, Cosmosm, or EVM, hit me up, and I'll make sure that Initia helps you win. <laughs>